Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing fraction fields. Okay, so we've now successfully constructed the fraction field from an integral domain. What I now want to do is prove that we can find a natural injective homomorphism from the integral domain into uh, the fraction field, uh, which will therefore allow us to think of the fraction field as an extension of the integral domain, so making it bigger so that it becomes a field. Okay, so what I want to find then is an injective ring homomorphism phi from the integral domain into the fraction field uh, generated from that integral domain, capital F here. Okay, and I want this, as I say, to be an injective ring homomorphism. Okay, so that means that I want it truly to be the case that this is isomorphic to a sub-portion of this. Okay, and then I can truly think of this as just being an extension of uh, the initial integral domain. Okay, right. So, how is this going to work then? So, I'm going to give you what this ring uh, homomorphism is actually going to do. It's going to take any element in the integral domain. So, A is just some element in the integral domain. And what equivalence class of fractions is it going to map A onto in the fraction field here? Okay, well, it's going to map it onto the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction A over 1. So, A over 1 is going to be some fraction um, you know, some fraction, okay, and then it will be in an equivalence class. So we're going to map any element of the integral domain onto this equivalence class of fractions in the fraction field here. Okay, so that's specifically how phi is going to work. So my job now is to show you that this is an injective ring homomorphism, and therefore that we truly do have an isomorphism uh, from the integral domain onto a sub-portion of the fraction field here, a sub-ring of the fraction field, and therefore we can think of the fraction field as an extension of the initial integral domain to turn it into a field. Okay, right, so injective is my first uh, thing that I need to prove. So I need to prove that every distinct element in the integral domain is carried on to a separate equivalence class of fractions in the fraction field. Okay, so what I want to prove then is that if you consider A and B, which are elements of the integral domain, what I want to show is that phi of A is not equal to phi of B. Okay, so no two elements in the integral domain are mapped onto the same thing. Instead, it is an injective map. They're all mapped onto distinct elements in the codomain, which is this fraction field. Okay, so how can I show this? Well, let's do it by proof by contradiction. So let's suppose instead that phi of a is equal to phi of b. Okay, what's that going to mean? Well, of course, we know what phi of a and phi of b are. Phi of a is just the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction a over 1. And phi of b is just the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction b over 1. Okay, so now we're doing a proof by contradiction, so we're assuming these two equivalence classes are equal to one another. Now, if these two equivalence classes are equal to one another, then that means that these two fractions are equivalent to one another, so they're related to one another. Okay, so that means that they obey that relation, that if I take the numerator here and multiply it by the denominator here, I'll get a, and if I take the denominator here and multiply it by the numerator here, I'll get b, so this would mean that a had to equal b. But that's not good, because we assumed A and B were distinct elements in the integral domain. They were not equal to one another. Okay, so uh, saying that this equivalence class of fractions that contains A over 1 is the same as the equivalence class of fractions that contains B over 1 instantly points you to the fact that A and B were the same elements in the integral domain. Okay, so that can only happen if this is A here. Okay, so it's not a new element. But for all different elements in the integral domain, uh, these equivalence classes of fractions here are not going to be equal to one another, so this cannot be true. Okay, so truly this is an injective map. All of these elements of the integral domain are being mapped onto distinct equivalence classes of fractions in the fraction field. No two of these are the same, unless you're talking about the same elements in the integral domain. Okay, uh, so that's very good. Uh, now what we want to prove is that it obeys the criteria of a ring homomorphism. So we want to prove additive compatibility, multiplicative compatibility, and that the multiplicative identity uh, in the integral domain is mapped onto the multiplicative identity in the fraction field. Okay, so let's start off with additive compatibility. So what we want to prove is that if you take any two elements in the integral domain, so for all A and B that you can possibly concoct from the integral domain capital D here, we want to prove that phi of A 
plus b, okay? And in this case, you are firstly adding the two elements together in the integral domain, so I'll colour that addition in in green here. So you add a and b together in the integral domain, and then you ask, well, which equivalence class of fractions is it going to be mapped onto by this uh, mapping phi, okay? I claim, if this is going to be a ring homomorphism, it must be the case that uh, this is the same as if you firstly map A into the fraction field, and then add it in the fraction field to what B is mapped onto in the fraction field. And this addition is going to be addition in the fraction field. Okay, so this is additive compatibility between the two. Okay, this is saying that addition in the integral domain is exactly the same as addition in this sub-portion of the fraction field that I've mapped the integral domain onto. Okay, so uh, let's show that this is the case then. So if we first consider the left-hand side here, so we've got a added to b in the integral domain here, and we're then taking phi of that, so what uh, equivalence class of fractions in the fraction field is this going to be mapped onto? Well, just applying the definition, it will be mapped onto the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction a plus b over 1, where of course this is still addition in the integral domain. So add a and b together in the integral domain, you get some answer, put that over 1, and then take the equivalence class that contains that fraction, that's going to be the answer to phi of a plus b. Okay, now let's have a look at the um, right-hand side here. So we will firstly want to map a and b into the fraction field, and of course a will be mapped onto the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction a over 1. So a over 1 bar here, and b will be mapped onto b over 1 bar here. And what I now want to do is add these together, and hopefully I will get this. And if I do get that, then addition in this sub-portion of the fraction field that I'm mapping onto uh, is compatible with addition in the integral domain. It's the same, they're isomorphic to one another. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, how can I do this then? So just apply the definition of how addition works in the fraction field. Okay, so I take a representative from here, take a representative from here, and construct that new fraction, and take the equivalence class that contains that new fraction. Okay, so I multiply the numerator here by the denominator here, I'll get A. Okay, I multiply the denominator here by the numerator here, I'll get B, and add those together in the integral domain. Okay, so I'll get A plus B as my numerator there and then I'll put it over the two denominators multiplied by one another, which just gives me 1, and I'll take the equivalence class that contains uh, that fraction. And of course, these two equivalence classes are identical, so indeed, uh, this uh, statement does hold true, and everything I did was valid for whatever a and b you take from the integral domain. Okay, so now I want to prove the exact same thing, but for multiplication. So I want to prove that if you firstly multiply a and b together in the integral domain, and then map them into the fraction field, that you'll get the same answer as if you firstly map a and b into the fraction field and then multiply them together in the fraction field. So this is multiplication in the integral domain, this is multiplication in the fraction field. So let's go. Okay, so let's take the left-hand side again, firstly. So what will phi of a times b be equal to? Well, that'll just be the equivalence class of fractions that contains the fraction a times b over 1, where again, of course, that multiplication is in the integral domain. Okay, now let's take the right-hand side here. So uh, phi of a will, of course, just be the equivalence class uh, that contains the fraction a over 1, so a over 1 bar here, and phi of b will just equal b over 1 bar. And then we are multiplying these two together in the uh, fraction field here. Okay, so let's work this out then. Again, we take a representative from here, we'll take a over 1, we take a representative from here, we take b over 1, okay, and we multiply the numerators together and the denominators together to get a new fraction, and we take the equivalence class that contains that. Multiplying the two numerators together gives a times b, multiplying the two denominators together gives 1, and we take the equivalence class that contains that. Okay, and of course, this is now multiplication in the integral domain. So you're asking for the equivalence class that contains the identical fraction, okay, so you're asking for the same equivalence class. So in Indeed, uh, this statement holds as well, and all those arguments apply for whatever a and whatever b you pick from the integral domain. Finally then, all I want to prove is that phi of the multiplicative identity in uh, the integral domain is mapped onto the multiplicative identity in the fraction field. So let's just do this, let's ask what is phi of 1? Well by definition it's just going to be 1 over 1, 
and then the um, equivalence class that contains that, but that's exactly equal to the multiplicative identity in our fraction field. So that one is true as well. So we now have found an injective ring homomorphism uh, from the integral domain into the fraction field. So you can think of this as an isomorphism from the integral domain into a subring of the fraction field, and that subring of the fraction field is then going to be isomorphic to the initial integral domain. So now you can think of it as an inclusion map. The integral domain is sitting inside the fraction field, or you can view it as the fraction field is an extension of the integral domain to turn it into a field. So now all integral domains can be extended to produce a field. So if you've got a finite integral domain, it's already a field. If you've got an infinite integral domain, it can be extended into a field. And the canonical example is taking the integral domain, which is the ring of integers, and extending it into the field of rationals, which are the field uh, of fractions where the numerators and denominators are integers. Okay, and with that we will end this video.